Hi, this is Ashish Shankar and I'm happy to take you through the first edition of the Alpha Strategist in the year 2020. Apart from the year gone by, we are also coming to the end of a decade. So we thought it would be interesting to look at the last decade and how it has worked out for investors as well as markets. One thing is very, very clear. There are two types of forecasters, one who don't know and those who don't know, they don't know. Why am I saying this? The markets have surprised all forecasts and have shattered all, all analyst expectations. We started the decade in India on a very positive note, if you recollect, this was the year 2010, which was again peak of the equity markets and the entire euphoria on infrastructure development in India. However, 2011, 12, 13 were very, very tough years globally as well as for Indian markets. Globally, we saw the big crisis where there was a time when people were worried that countries like Greece or Spain would default on their debt and this would cause a widespread contagion across the globe. We saw global markets correcting very, very sharply and this was also echoed in the Indian markets. Subsequently, we did see many other challenges in the Indian markets. It started with the 2G scam, the coal allocation scam and there was literally a policy standstill and Indian markets fell very, very sharply and it culminated in the balance of trade and current account deficit issues in the year 2013, which saw the rupee depreciate very, very sharply. Now, this was the time when interest rates, short term interest rates were hiked to a level higher than even the long term rates in India to stem the outflow from India. Subsequently, Dr. Rajan took over as the RBI governor. He laid down CPI as the basic framework to manage monetary policy and he set a, a band of 4 to 6 percent around which interest rates would move. Now, this has a lot of far reaching in, in implications which I'll talk to when I talk, talk about my uh, fixed income view. Meanwhile, globally, in spite of it having started in a very tough manner and in a very challenging situation, we've ended the decade with one of the best returns in the US equity markets. We saw the S&P 500 compounding at 11%, 11.3% per annum. And as we speak, the valuations are market cap to GDP is about 160%, which is probably one of the most expensive in the history of the US market. So we've seen a phenomenal decade and probably the longest economic expansion that US has, has witnessed. Of course, this has come with its fair share of stimulus. Just in 2013, Fed wanted to again start hiking rates and escape from this low interest rate regime and quantitative easing. However, as we end the year 2019, we are back to quantitative easing and Fed has in fact cut rates again. So whatever we tried to do uh, in the past decade whether it is hiking rates we've again reversed back but this has this has ensured that the equity markets delivered one of the best returns last year in the in the us s&p 500 moved up by close to 24 24 25 percent uh, at the same time, emerging markets have lagged and that has had a bearing, bearing on India. Apart from some of the policy paralysis which hit Indian markets uh, in 2011, 12, 13, 2014 started with a very, very, uh, on a very, very optimistic note with BJP getting a very decisive mandate to rule. Uh, people were expecting a lot of major reforms to come through and that to eventually result in corporate profitability and, and, and markets going up. So markets did go up uh, on, on high expectations uh, and we did see a lot of major reforms coming through like uh, uh, you had uh, the GST being rolled out, uh, you had the RERA which is the Real Estate Regulatory Act uh, being implemented. We also saw demonetization to try and curb the uh, flow of black money, black money in the economy. Uh, unified tax system GST was rolled out. However, this came with its share of pain as companies as well as the economy has taken a lot of time to adjust to some of these uh, uh, policy initiatives. Uh, at the same time, we saw uh, uh, banking uh, regulations being tightened by the RBI governor, uh, which led to recognition, higher recognition of uh, non-performing assets. In the banking systems, the NPS swelled to close to 10%, uh, the gross NPS. Uh, however, a large part of the provisioning and the pain we believe is behind us and we are now looking at much better days ahead, especially for corporate banks and we believe corporate banks will drive profitability going, going forward. because. 
because most of the provisioning is done and in fact now the NCLT process has reached a stage where we are seeing large scale resolutions on the NPA front. So corporate banks will drive profitability. Just when things were getting much better on the banking side and the economic outlook was improving, we got hit by the ILFS problem wherein we saw ILFS, one of our premier lending institutions collapse and that further caused a contagion across many other NBFCs which had an asset liability mismatch. Essentially there were a lot of NBFCs after demonetization where the short term rates dropped dramatically where borrowing short, short term 3 to 6 month money and then they were lending long term typically for housing finance loans. After ILFS there was huge widespread risk aversion in the market and the rollover of the short term borrowing. Uh, disappeared or, or lenders became very averse to lending to some of these institutions and that resulted in an asset liability mismatch which further resulted in larger NPAs and we find some of them now in the ambit of uh, NCLT and trying to be resolved. But the outcome of this was credit uh, disbursement further collapsed and slowed down as NBFCs were the primary engine of credit growth uh, in, the, in the last five years leading up to 2018 ILFS crisis. So today we are ending the decade uh, uh, in, in US uh, on a high where we are seeing unemployment rates at extremely low rates, inflation being under control. Uh, even though China growth has slowed down, it has contributed to 37% of the incremental growth because the size is uh, so large because they saw many years of very, very uh, high growth. As we enter the next decade, US is very, very optimistic. However, at the same time, one must be a little sanguine because you've seen the largest period of economic expansion. And uh, typically, we've seen after such periods of economic expansion, definitely there is a phase where things tend to slow down or, or things tend to take a breather. The Fed is also trying to, re at some point, will try to reverse its monetary policy because this cheap uh, money policy or co of quantitative easing and low interest rates cannot go on for too long it will eventually result in uh, inflation so one must be uh, wary of that as well and I'm reminded of a quote by one of famous songs of Eagles Hotel California where they, where they say that you can check in anytime you like but you can never leave and that's the state of central banks they're, try they're trying hard but they're unable to uh, reverse their easy monetary policy and same thing we are seeing in Europe as well however in India uh, we've seen a lot of uh, slowdown and we've seen uh, widespread uh, issues due to the collapse of uh, uh, NBFC lending. Uh, the GST implementation has had its own share of uh, challenges. We've also hit by a lot of uh, issues of corporate governance uh, uh, problems where many companies uh, have been found to uh, 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 having corporate governance issues. Uh, so, how, but but all the all of this uh, happens during a process where the system is trying to move to a, a different form of governance or a higher form of governance rather, and a different way of doing business. So we are we quite optimistic that this eventually should should result into better economic growth, which should eventually result to better uh, demand on the investment side and uh, infrastructure as well. Uh, the longer term story of India is unchanged. The longer term story of in India is essentially a large pool of working population. In fact, the largest in another couple of years, uh, increasing per capita incomes, which is going to lead to uh, you, uh, widespread demand across many consumer discretionary as well as staple uh, industries. And it really represents the last bastion of growth for many companies uh, in the global global context. So India will definitely be a, a very important country on the radar of most global corporates and we should continue to receive a, a fair share of FDI and FI. However, the current challenge for the government is to revive growth. Whilst a lot has been done, which includes giving SOPs to revive the NBFC sector, uh, to the real estate sector. Uh, and uh, the recent tax cuts have definitely brought in a little more optimism. Uh, the road uh, ahead, uh, you still need uh, many more measures on, uh, and ensure that some of these policies are executed to come back on the growth path. We have the budget uh, end of this month and I think we are going into this budget with very little expectations. However, one area which everybody will be watchful for is the personal direct tax, direct, uh, tax code because a lot has been done on the corporate taxation front. 
Uh, however, on the direct tax code, uh, to simplify the direct tax code, uh, direct taxes, uh, much has not been done. So people will watch for that. Uh, otherwise, we are going into the budget with very little expectations, to be honest, because there is very little fiscal room for the government. They need to adhere to the fiscal target as well. At the same time, they need to ensure that the taxation further gets uh, simplified. Uh, uh, however, I think people will watch for the execution of some of the measures that they have recently announced. Like I said, the longer term. Uh, economics of India and the uh, longer term opportunity in India is still very very large and uh, that will continue to drive investments and uh, hence equity investments in India make, make a lot of sense. Last 10 years we saw the Nifty delivering close to uh, eight percent. This was much lower than nominal GDP growth of close to eleven to twelve percent. We've we've often seen that whenever uh, the last the previous decade has been uh, uh, led by lower uh, equity returns than the nominal GDP growth, the subsequent decade normally uh, tends to outperform. So I think we are we are in for much much higher equity returns over the next uh, ten years. Uh, at the same time, like I said, internationally you've seen the largest period of economic expansion. So expect uh, some volatility and fixed income yields are actually very very attractive right now due to this inflation targeting framework of rbi of uh, uh, ensuring that inflation remains within the 4 to 6% band i think there is a commitment to to keep real rates at reasonable levels today the real rates are very high with average inflation around 4 to 5% you are getting real rates of almost 200 300 basis points in high quality bonds so it's very attractive for fixed income savers so our advice to, to, to all our clients is to have a diversified portfolio of equities, fixed income and gold. I would, I would tilt it towards equities because markets are reasonably valued, the broad markets. Uh, fixed income is also offering a lot of value. The term spreads are extremely high. So buy into products which have three to four year maturities, have high quality corporate bonds with a little bit of credit and have some gold in the portfolio to protect yourself against any international volatility. Gold has always been a, a protector of wealth when something globally or there is some geopolitical tensions which, which upset uh, capital markets. So this is a good allocation to go into the next decade. Uh, our theme is depolarization because last year was all about polarization. You saw very very few stocks doing extremely well which kept driving Indian markets and as a result most portfolios, most of our client portfolios have underperformed the nifty and some of the large cap stocks. Uh, same uh, behavior we saw in fixed income where a lot of money went to few issuers whereas uh, even very high quality issuers in the single A or the double A space uh, got money at double digit uh, yields. We believe the markets will decouple this year and you will see depolarization and the broader markets will do much better by the end of this year. So uh, whether it's mid and small caps uh, or whether it is uh, money flowing into more uh, issuers, we'll see all of that happening. Uh, hence, uh, we we believe a diversified portfolio is what 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 will be best suited for you. And the best way to implement that is to have a plan through an investment charter and monitor that charter in a disciplined manner. So, with that, I wish all of you a great, successful, and peaceful 2020. Thank you very much.